Not every court day do you get to witness a paternity battle between two interracial women. Mr. Hughes is caught in a crossfire between his ex-girlfriend, Ms. Jackson, and his mother, Ms. McBirth, and I hope he's wearing a vest. These ladies are having a dispute on whether or not the young man is the biological father of little Elijah. We are in for a classic American television soap opera. You say you're stuck between your mother and your ex-girlfriend who are in a heated dispute in court today. Ms. McBurth, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Ms. Jackson's two-year-old son, Elijah Jackson. Furthermore, you're suing Ms. Jackson for $1,000 for defamation of character because you claim she posted comments on social media. Going first is Ms. McBirth, and she is not holding back in her critical description of her son's ex-girlfriend's character. The black mother tags the young white lady as trash, trouble, and trifler. Oh, she didn't stop there. Mr. Hughes's mother insists she won't accept Elijah as her grandson, mainly because of his skin color. So, Ms. McBirth, why do you believe your son's not the father? This woman is trouble. She is trouble with a capital T. She, as a matter of fact, I call her the three T's. Trash, trouble, and trifling. That's what she is. The little boy looks nothing like my son any, or any member of my family at all. Can I show it? Can I? Absolutely, ma'am. Okay. What did you bring? Piece of evidence, Jerome, may I yeah. see that, please? This is a photo photo of your son and the child in question. Right. Ms. Jackson tells the court how she feels about her ex-boyfriend's mother's statements, but before she could make a point, Big Mama comes at her without restraint again. I think it's time Mama takes a breather and let the young woman tell her side of the story. Obviously, you have a different opinion. So why do you think she's in so much doubt over your child? I have no idea, to be honest. Like, maybe because he is so white? Because he's all the white white. He ain't got no black I in here. Oh, everything I see got mm -hmm. uh, powder puff on it. I don't see no chocolate nowhere, okay? No, ma'am. The young woman claims she was in an intimate relationship with Mr. Hughes for several months before she conceived, and he was the only man she had sexual relations with at that time, so he had to be her baby's father. Yet again, Big Mama interrupts her, but this time around, she has backup. Have you been in a relationship with Mr. Hughes? For maybe about... 15, 18 months. Okay, so a little over a year. Were you in a committed relationship? I thought we was. You did, okay. And was he the only person you were intimate with during that time? Yes, ma'am. Now she knows she lied. Can I, can she I lied, she lied. Yes, ma'am. This uh, DNA right here. Apparently, Mr. Hughes has two kids by another woman, and they are the only children accepted by his family. There seems to be more to the hatred they have for Ms. Jackson and her son. You wouldn't believe what Ms. McBirth did the first moment she saw little Elijah. Mr. Hughes has. <clears throat> in 10 years, he got, got two years. babies he got, he's been by another for woman, years. and for those years. are my grandchildren. For 10 years, so she was she, all she basically was for him was a snack cake on the side of his meal. Thank there you. There was nothing more. Thank you, a side chick. And it's all she has done is she's been trying to put the baby on us. Force it, yeah you have. Don't sit up and act like you have it. But the thing about she her- She's trying is, to push that baby on, that ain't mine. Listen, I didn't sleep with her. Now this is where it gets interesting. Mr. Hughes's sister claims Ms. Jackson initially told her she didn't know who fathered her son. Whoa! If she actually admitted that at first, then she deserves all the heat she has been getting. What's more is that she turned down every chance of getting a DNA test done before today's hearing. Elijah she told is me very he was, white. She told me she didn't know who the father was. She First, she's changed her story up different times about who's the father. At first, when, when I first met the girl, she said, okay, I asked her, I said, okay, this is my brother's baby. She said, yes. I said, I said, do you know or do you think? She said, I think. So when we asked her while she was pregnant, we asked her for a DNA test. That's not not all. There is an argument that Elijah has Ms. Jackson's ex-husband's last name. And on top of that, Mr. Hughes's name isn't on his birth certificate. What explanation does our baby mama have for these accusations? That's because that's my last name. Mm -hmm. And so hold on now, if you don't think the child is his, why would she be trying to change the name? Well, We've been didn't... trying to change the no. name. A couple weeks ago, even, we couple talked about ago, it. He's two, he's two, Wait, in two he, years. My, my son ain't said his no name like on the birth lying. certificate. Stop lying. Okay. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Do you know? Nobody. Exactly, because it's because he went. Be he was anybody. not there it when be, he was it born. Be That's the exactly, lie. I could you, put you, anybody on there, but I didn't. Exactly. You put you put you don't know. Know. Judge Lauren tries to analyze the young man's connection with the child in question through a picture. Big Mama couldn't stay in her skin seeing her son showing the little boy some fatherly affection in a picture. You couldn't have guessed what said. 
just take a look at the monitor. When you look at this picture... It make me want to throw up. It seems like your son is kissing the baby. It makes you want to throw up. It makes up. me want to throw up because Why? it's a lie. For your son to be kissing an innocent child? Because it's not his. It doesn't matter, really, it's if he's showing the child love. It's not his. Since the hearing commenced, Mr. Hughes has been a passenger like the rest of us. Now it's time for him to tell his side of the story. What he has to say will leave you dumbfounded. Step up to the podium. Do you believe you are Elijah's father? I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because I'm biracial. My father's white, you know. That child is not my son, okay? She got men coming and going in and out of her house. My father's a brown hair, blue eyed dude, so. How you know? <laughs> he just gonna say that because, eyes. you know, she gonna freak him after this. Yeah. The court has heard everyone's side of the story, but that's not enough to determine whether or not Mr. Hughes is Elijah's biological father. The only way to determine that is Judge Lake reading out the DNA test result. Now let's cut to the chase. Mr. Hughes, you are Elijah's father. No! A biracial young man is in court today with his white mom to prove that his black ex-girlfriend's baby isn't his. For backup, his ex-girlfriend Ms. Jones also came with her mom to cement her claims. It looks like today's case is a tag team championship match. Don't go nowhere. Ms. Jones, you and your mother say you are tired of the defendant's denial. He's the biological father of your six-month-old son and once the DNA results prove your claim, you demand to be reimbursed for Baby Lyric's childcare expenses. Is that correct? Mr. Houston, you and your mother believe jealousy over your new relationship has led the plaintiff to point to you as her child's father, and you are convinced the truth will be revealed in court today. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. Ms. Jones alleges that she was in a relationship with Mr. Houston in high school, but the relationship went down the drain just before prom. She literally left him because he can't think on his own. Well, Your Honor, he was so immature that I had to break it up, break it off with him a week before prom. He let everybody in his ear. He doesn't have a brain for himself. Were you boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. In high school? Yes, ma'am. Something utterly bizarre happened when Judge Lake asked the young man if he thinks for himself. His answer was so hilarious, it left everyone laughing. What's more hilarious is what his mom whispered in his ear with the mic on. Now it's evident that Mr. Houston is a mommy's boy, and that's why they broke up. Do you think for yourself? No. You don't? Who thinks for you? Yes, you do, honey. Who thinks for you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. You do? Yes, yes. my son thinks for himself. They were, um, she broke up a few days before prom. It was not a week. It was a week before it prom. Was two, it was two or three days before. After getting inspiration from mom, Mr. Mr. Houston is all pumped up and ready to take on his ex-girlfriend. He claims they broke up because she cheated. But Ms. Jones cuts in to make the court understand that his parents orchestrated their breakup. No, prom. it was a week before prom, Your Honor. We broke it up because she was getting confronted of cheating on me. Che <laughs> but I never cheated on him. Okay. I have never cheated on him. But once I, they, I got, his family had him I believe got to her. that he was that I was the one who was cheating on so him. And it was mainly who, you and your you're husband. You're right. Mrs. Houston trees to defend herself by explaining that Miss Jones once lets her 15-year daughter play with her phone, and once it was connected to the home Wi-Fi, some awkward messages came through. These messages led to the conclusion that the young woman was cheating on her son. Because me was and my good. daughter were catching text messages coming through your what phone. What text messages? Um, you were um, answering your phone. What text messages? Um, the one about the gentleman asking about, did y'all have a good time last night? It wasn't and a text then you message denied in my it phone. When my 14-year-old daughter was sitting there? Even with those strong allegations, the young woman maintains that she never cheated on her ex-boyfriend. Now who's lying? We will find out soon enough, won't we? After she got pregnant, she said was unsure about telling the Houstons because of their usual drama. But eventually she did, and she got more drama. I don't know why they got there. When idea. you two were dating, were you dating anyone else? No, I was with him. I was faithful to him. So you broke up around prom, the time yes, right before a, prom? A week before prom. When did you find out you were pregnant? I found out June 3rd that I was pregnant. And then, like, once I scheduled the date for my actual appointment to see how far along I was, 
was, I was a whole month pregnant. The drama between the two families in court today is off the charts. Ms. Jones claims her ex-boyfriend's mom has been excluding herself from anything that involves her baby. Instead, she's focused on the white lady her son impregnated. Now that sounds like racism. It's obvious that our white granny prefers having a white grandson over having a black grandson. Disconnecting herself this whole time. She's like, the I don't, well, that's between you and Nigel. That's between you yep. and Nigel. So Ms. she Houston, doesn't- have you, you stepped out of the picture? You said it was between her and her, your son? Yes, ma'am, because it's so much drama going on. When you call somebody eight months pregnant and say, hey, um, I just found your number in my old phone. So, hey, um, uh, yo, you guys are too much drama. I didn't want to tell you I was pregnant. In an attempt to hide her racism agenda, Mrs. Houston insists that her family family didn't discover the pregnancy until it was several months old, which is why she believes the pregnancy isn't her son's. Ms. Jones was quick to remind her she requested for a DNA test several times to clear all doubts, but there was no response from the Houstons. Because she waited until she was eight months. I mean, what you can't just throw eight months and I'm about to have a baby in a month and expect somebody to jump on ship with you and be like, okay, great, let's go shopping. Your and Honor, I was- Hold on. And I text and called her, never got a return call. Your Honor, I asked for a DNA multiple times, more than three times. Because I already knew that me telling them at eight months that I was pregnant, I already knew it was probably going to be like some denial. So I offered the DNA test. In the midst of the argument between the two families, the Houstons made a strong claim about other potential fathers for the baby in question. Whoa, where did that come from? As it turns out, Mr. Houston's new girlfriend works at the same place as his ex-girlfriend. And as you would expect, she has a lot share with the court. She so why like, did the co-worker say somebody else was the baby daddy? What co-worker? The manager said. The manager? The manager your said, honor, oh, you're one of honor, the guys that she's claiming to be your, uh, be her baby daddy. Your honor, the manager wait, told what's the story? The, <laughs> your she honor, was, what um, the is they talking about? Miss Hasty worked at, um, one of the managers came in and um, saw Mr. Houston or my son and said that um, is that one of the guys that uh, Miss Jones is claiming to be her baby's father? After taking the Houstons to school, Judge Lake is ready to read the DNA test results. Does Mama's boy get to father two babies at the same time? Only one way to find out. Mr. Houston, you are the father. Boom! Yeah. Miss Jones, Miss Jones, don't don't act silly. Don't act silly in here. Don't. Don't do it. Mr. Watson appears before Judge Lake to prove that he didn't father Ms. Mahoney's son, Kevin. The plaintiff believes his white girlfriend was in a sexual relationship with other men besides him. Whoa, that's a strong allegation. But the defendant denies sleeping with other men, so it's his words against hers. Mr. Watson, you are in court to prove that you are not the biological father of the defendant's four-year-old son, Kevin. You say that while you were away, Ms. Mahoney was having having sexual relationships with two different men and either of them could be the father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Mahoney, you say you are 99.999% sure that Mr. Watson is the father. The outcome of this DNA test means so much to this biracial couple because they've come such a long way together. Ms. Mahoney attests that her fiance treats Kevin harshly at times because of his doubts. We understand how you feel, mister, but that's an unfair way to treat an innocent child. I've known her since we were kids. If I, I, we need to get these results because, you know, we are engaged and I would like to marry her and I really hope this is my son. And you say the relationship's on the line, meaning if the results don't turn out the way you would like, the relationship, the marriage, everything? It's out the window, Your Honor. It's, it's over with. Mr. Watson claims he couldn't give the kid fatherly love because he doesn't see him as his son perhaps because he isn't black enough. On top of that, he says Ms. Mahoney is labeled the neighborhood white hoe. Man, that's a racist thing to say. And as expected, Judge Lake takes him to school. Mr. Watson, you are rejecting the child? Yes, Your Honor. I'm not the dad, that's why. When I, when I was away, when, when I came back, she was cheating and she has a bad reputation of being basically, as I'm gonna say it, the neighborhood hoe. Okay, we're gonna try to use respectful language, but you, you, let's say she had a reputation of being very promiscuous. Yes. You won't believe what the plaintiff said he noticed when he came back from a trip. Two men had moved in with his girlfriend. 
Can you imagine that? She had two men staying with her, and they were showering her, showering her with gifts and taking care of her. Now, me as a man, personally, I'm not going to do that for no woman. Being either. a man, though, you should have left me. I never left. Miss Mahoney, did you have two men living with you? Yes, ma'am. You did. I had no job. I had nothing to fend for myself. They were close family friends, and they just wanted to help no, me help them. Ms. Mahoney claims she has no sexual relations with either of the men in question. But funny enough, one of them told her boyfriend otherwise. Apparently, she has been giving them more than a place to stay. So now we get why he has been treating Kevin coldly. But he's not to be blamed for his mother's actions, though. I would not. Mr. Watson, you are shaking your head. You don't believe that? They were, they were not close family friends. That is not true, Your Honor. I've known them since I was 13. That ain't no family friend. 13, nothing. So did you ever ask him, are you sleeping with? Yes, Your Honor. I, oh, you did? Yes. And what was his response? He said yes. Yet whenever the plaintiff confronts the defendant about the things he discovered about her, she would deny it all. The whole situation is so messy, and I wonder why they didn't confront the man that made the allegation together. Perhaps if he could repeat those statements in her presence, it would have been easier to get to the bottom of it all. You confronted her about that? Yes, multiple times. What and when I say? asked him, I told him we can go together in front of this person and ask them, and he doesn't want to. But when I do say that. let's go in front of him, she never does. He doesn't want to do that. That's he stalls true. out. That's not true. Oh, you haven't heard it all. One of the so called family friends always refers to Kevin as his son right in Mr. Watson's presence. He even refers to Ms. Mahoney as his girlfriend, but not for the first time today. The defendant has a petty explanation for that. Why was why would that other guy say he's the father? He There's always There's a difference says, between oh, a father and a son. dad. That's Just to know son. that. What you mean? He the one talking about that. That's his kid. He provided for him. Okay, I was away. I couldn't. When I called you and he was hungry, then what? I was away. I could there was nothing I could do. Like I said, there's a difference between being a father okay, so and a if he was dad. my if he was my kid, so bring other men around my kid? The whole time we thought Miss Mahoney was the only guilty party. Boy, were we wrong. Mr. Watson had sexual relations with a former friend of the defendant's, and this woman told him some horrible things about his girlfriend, which he believed to be true. Now that's crazy. Her and her friend fell out, you know, and the friend called me one day and was like, I want to I want to tell you everything. And she basically told me everything, how she was What she did with... was lie to you because you and her had sexual intercourse. No. Did you not? No, we did not. She, no, that did not happen? No, we did not have sexual What did her friend tell you, Mr. Watson? The friend told me how she was sleeping with multiple men, plus the two staying with her. As it turns out, they once had a DNA test before coming to the paternity court, and the result showed that Mr. Watson is Kevin's biological father. However, Mr. Watson doubts the legitimacy of the result, and he has his reasons. Hey, we got DNA. You took a DNA test? Yes, ma'am. What happened? I went and was on government assistance and child support. They, uh, we have to comply with them. And they asked me who the father was. I told him who he was, and he ran from all the things, and finally they found him and had him go up there and take the DNA. We can go on and on with this hearing all day, and we still won't get to the root of this matter. At this point, I think it's time to hear the judge read out the results. Prepare yourself for what is to come. Mr. Watson, you are the father. See? I love you. I love you so much. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Have you ever heard of a miracle baby? Well, you're about to witness one because that's the theme of today's case. Mr. Ball sues his girlfriend, Ms. Cox, over the paternity of her child. He claims she initially told him she couldn't get pregnant, but out of nowhere, she says he fathered her daughter. If he isn't the baby's father, then who is? You say that you were told by the defendant, Ms. Cox, that she could not get pregnant, and now she's claiming you fathered her daughter. There's a dispute between the couple on whether or not the defendant had sex with other men during the window of conception. Whoa! But as expected, Ms. Cox denies ever doing such. How do we know who's lying and who's telling the truth? We will get to that. But first, let's hear them give their testimonies. She was sleeping with multiple men at the time she conceived and say her best friend confirmed it. Yeah. All right, now Ms. Cox, you claim that your other sexual relationships ended prior to sleeping with Mr. Ball. Yes, Your Honor. And you believe he is your daughter's father and plan to prove it today. Mr. Ball claims that while he was serving time, he and the defendant had conversations every day. However, three months before his release date, something crazy happened. He received a letter from a reputable source about Ms. Cox's cheating habits. When he asked her about it, she played down the speculation. Now, Mr. Ball, yes. 
Yes. How did you first hear that Miss Cox was sleeping with multiple men? Well, during the time of my incarceration, Your Honor, you know, I was, we were talking every day, you know, morning, noon, night, we would talk every day. And maybe within uh, the last 90 days of me, you know, serving my time, I was getting letters from her best friend stating to me that she was sleeping with other men, going out with other men. After hearing what the plaintiff had to say, the judge asks Ms. Cox about her relationship with other men. Without wavering, she says her relationship with other men wasn't sexual. Now that's very hard to believe. If she's telling the truth, why did someone close to her break the news to her boyfriend? While he was away, were you in a relationship with another man? We wasn't, we was in a physical relationship. It wasn't like we weren't together, well, nothing like that. So it was that. a sexual relationship. And he knew about this. Once did I, you tell no, Mr. Ball? No, no. Yes, I did. I wrote no. him a letter and I told him everything that no. was going on and he wrote back and still agreed to come home to me after no. hearing everything as long as everything was put to a stop. This where it gets more interesting. The news source is the defendant's best friend and the plaintiff's baby mama. Okay, now we are getting a clearer picture of the situation at hand. She claims she had Mr. Ball's best interest at heart because she doesn't want his friends to make fun of him once he gets back home. How thoughtful of her. That's Who also still has feelings for him and wanted him to come home to her. But that has nothing to do with it. She was basically telling me, you know, I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm just letting you know before you come home and look like a fool to yourself and all your friends. Oh, there's more. The plaintiff claims one of the men his girlfriend was sleeping with moved into her apartment. Imagine hearing all that while in prison. That must have been really tough for the young man to handle. But once again, the defendant denies that ever happening. You know, so I told her, this is what I'm hearing. Now, what she says about it being just a physical thing, what I'm hearing is this guy was living there, he no, was he staying wasn't. there, he had no, keys he to the place, she put him out the day before I came home. No, I Mr. Ball says that his girlfriend's cheating habit didn't stop when he got home. Whoa, how crazy is that? He attests that there was a day he dropped her off at her mom's house, and when he went back to pick her, she was acting weird. When they got back home, she went to bed because she was tired. But while she was asleep, her phone rang, and you couldn't have guessed what happened. Mr. Ball, when you got home, did you have any other indication that she was cheating? Yes, yes, no. I did. What? I yes, I, was I with did. You every second well, of the day. you were every, every second. I was so with you, you every second. You forgot about the time you were, I dropped you, were using you off my at your car mom's. Taking... You forgot about the time I dropped you off at your mom's you house, and we got into that big incident where I dropped you off at your mom's house. Went and got my hair cut. Within a time of me going to get my haircut, coming back and picking her That's up. That's when the text When I got her, when I picked her up. Oh, that wasn't the only time the truth came to Mr. Ball. He saw different pictures of his woman with multiple dudes on the computer. Can you beat that? Why would she keep pictures of her time with other men on her home computer while her boyfriend is around? Oh, I think it's a miracle they are still together after so much drama. Did you have any other proof that she was still yeah, cheating? Yeah, okay, one day I was at home on the internet grabbing pictures off of our computer and I pull up a picture, not not one picture, but, but multiple pictures. But you knew I was hanging out with the guy, he knew about the guy. Of her and not only just that guy, another guy. No, and another guy. guy. And I had so let me ask you this, what was in the pictures? You wouldn't believe what comes next. Mr. Ball got Ms. Cox's best friend pregnant and she didn't know it was his until the delivery date was a few weeks away. Yet she stood by him and helped take care of the baby. What is crazier is that it's the same supposed best friend that sent him letters about her infidelity while he was in prison. He has literally labeled her a white bitch all day, whereas he has hurt her in more ways than she could possibly hurt him. You slept with behind my back. Not at all. Yes, you did. Not at all. Yes, you did. Not at all. My supposed to be best friend at the supposed time was to be. living with us, and she was sleeping with him and his cousin at and the same time, and she got pregnant and, and lied times? to me the whole time she was pregnant that the baby was not his, it was his cousin's. When the baby finally did come back to be his, when the baby was like six or seven months old, that's when she finally broke down and told me, and you know what? I was still her friend, and I was still there for his child taking care of his child. It came to light that Mr. Ball did something utterly unspeakable to Ms. Cox and her daughter when her mom stepped upon the podium for her testimony. He threw the young woman, her baby, and their gifts out in the snow during Christmas. Now, there's an argument that he wouldn't have done that to her if she was black, because black women aren't so submissive. Whoa! How racist is that? I really saw his true colors in December of 2011 when he kicked my daughter and grandbaby out in the snow with all their gifts. I'm not being racist, but he knows he can get away with this because these girls are white and more submissive. He no. would never no. try this no. with a black girl. Hearing the testimonies from both sides, it's hard to tell if Mr. Ball is indeed the baby's biological father or not. I think now is a good time to hear the test results. Let's have it. Mr. Ball, you are her father.
Is that the news you wanted? Yes. So understand this. Whatever the doubt has stopped you, blocked you from doing, from fully committing. Mrs. Jones and Ms. Hernandez are in court today to prove that Mr. Trevino fathered both of their children. One of these women is black, while the other and the defendant himself are white. Wow, what a case we have at hand. Our defendant of the day is a man of all colors. And Ms. Hernandez, you are each here today to prove to a man that he is the father of your children. Now that man, Mr. Trevino, is waiting outside of the courtroom and will join us shortly. What makes this case more hilarious is that each of these women believe the other woman is the reason their potential baby daddy is denying their child. Now the question is, how did they get here? We would find out soon enough. Ms. Jones, you say Mr. Trevino is denying your child, and you say it has a lot to do with Ms. Hernandez. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Hernandez, you say he's also denying that he's the father of your child. Yes. You know what, Jerome, I'm ready to see Mr. Trevino right now. Ms. Jones claims Mr. Trevino has been denying her baby, Cheryl, from the onset. He has been neglecting his fatherly role and she needs him to step up. But the young man didn't waste time debunking her claims. He says his family has been there for her and the baby. But that's clearly not enough for the young woman and her baby. He denied her back and forth. He says, I'm not the father, I, I am I'm the father. I'm not denying, I'm simply requesting the truth, Your Honor. I'm not denying anybody and I've been there for both of my You sons. have not been there. My you family and I have done a Keyword, lot. Keyword, your family, you are the father. Another crazy thing is this. Mr. Trevino believes Ms. Jones has been sleeping with other men besides him. Oh, he didn't stop there. He says he doubts the child's paternity because the timing of conception didn't add up. Unsurprisingly, Ms. Jones didn't hold back in her response. I'm not the father because you you have different men. You you know I, we weren't together long. He's just not right. Mr. You, Trevino, why the doubt? Why have you been denying that this child is yours? You know we went to the doctor. I asked him around what time did she get pregnant. He gave you, me around. You don't even know what you know. time because you're not right. Obviously, the defendant needs clarity with the days of conception. And as always, Judge Lake lends a valuable helping hand. The young man claims he doesn't recollect having sex with Ms. Jones during those periods. But she's quick to label him a dumb white boy because he has a retentive memory. Perhaps she's actually pinning the pregnancy on him falsely. Well, we are soon to find out. And yes, you Honor. submitted these days to the court yes, Your Honor, to have. outline <laughs> your doubt. So let's look hmm. at those. Now you claim you went to a doctor's appointment at some point in June, around the 18th. Yes. Sir. And you're thinking back to that week in March, the estimated dates of conception. And in your mind, you're saying, I don't remember being intimate with her around that time. Even Judge Lake notices how hard the young woman is slapping Mr. Trevino's face with her words, but she frames her actions in the best way possible. Even if you're going through psychological pain, that's no way to talk to your child's potential father. Now, you would expect Ms. Jones to would say she remembers being intimate with the young man during the estimated conception time, but no. She slapped your imagination so hard. Ms. Jones, you're coming down real hard on him, and he I'm doesn't hurt. this, and he's I'm not hurt. this, he's not. Okay, I get that you hurt, but you did choose to be with him, so it had to be something about him you like. Moving on from that, the young woman says she always called Mr. Trevino Cheryl's father from day one, but afterwards, she gave herself up. She didn't realize the next thing she said until it came out of her mouth, and that caught the entire court by surprise, too. This time around, the young man found his voice and told the court how she gave him a low blow. I'm not, Did I'm you always tell him that he was Cheryl's father, though? Always, always. Until the point oh, where she told me. Did you ever tell him that he was not? I did. Now, why it would you why It would was you wrong. Tell him that? We were having was a wrong. discussion. It turned into an argument. And right away, she went down and, and gave me a low blow. And cause I was like, I've been doing this for you and been doing that for you. You know, I kind of put it out there that, you know what I'm saying, I deserve some gratitude. Well, that's not the only origin to Mr. Trevino doubts. He claims she was a club hopper when he newly met her and it was her thing to switch between married men. The plaintiff tries to deny it, but she couldn't beat him down this time around. Now we understand why the young man has doubts of fathering the kid, but he did have unprotected sex with her though, so maybe, just maybe. 
before we got into a serious relationship, mm -hmm. she was club hopping. She was, you know, going out with him and I going was out a with him, bringing lady him with home. No children. Yes, you were single. When you, mm -hmm. you know, I respect that. No, you but don't. you're known, and she's told me herself. You know, she's been in relationships with men who are engaged and married. Oh, really? And, you know. Oh, really? Like, so I know she was raised maybe right, like she says. Maybe but, you know, you're you gotta flipping get yours your story. Too. Now, in terms of the other woman, Ms. Jones claims Ms. Hernandez hinders Mr. Trevino from seeing Cheryl. In her defense, Ms. Hernandez says she didn't interfere in any father-daughter relationship, but admits to interfering with Ms. Jones getting back with her man. Oh, did I fail to mention that he's denying fathering her too? Well, that's Mr. Trevor's family drama for you. I can't come see Cheryl, our daughter, because Ms. Hernandez doesn't want me to be around my daughter. What is your response to her claim that what you are it? interfering with his ability to be a father to his child that he has with I'm her? I'm not interfering in him being a father. I am interfering in him being in a relationship with her. We get that the young man has reasons to doubt both women's loyalty to him, but it doesn't change the fact that he slept with both of them numerous times without protection, and that makes it a 50-50 chance that he fathered both of their kids. But hey, only the DNA test results can reveal the truth. So let's hear it from Judge Lauren. Mr. Trevino, you are her father. Now, I need the help. So it's documented, it is documented. Hopefully he will step up financially. Unfortunately, he has to be forced now, but he will step up and be there. I don't have to be forced. I'm the one that it told you to go. Mr. Trevino, trust me, the courts will hold you to this. Ms. Duncan has two men paying child support for her two-year-old daughter. Yep, as strange as it sounds, that's the theme of today's court case. With good reasons, her main man is very doubtful of fathering the kid and demands a paternity test. But if he's indeed the child's biological father, he will pay more child support. Fasten your seatbelts because it's about to be a long ride. You that's claim your rights as a potential father to the child in question today, two-year-old Angel Bryant, were basically stolen from you. Yes, Your Honor. You say at 56 years old and having never fathered a child previously, you've had doubts about paternity from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Yet you maintain you still assume financial responsibility for Angel. How is it okay to sleep with your supposed ex when you're in a relationship with a man you share a special bond with? Something isn't right here. Perhaps the relationship bond was never that special. Ms. Duncan likes to get the freak on, but Mr. Green isn't active enough to sweep her off her feet. But that doesn't justify her infidelity, does it? Mr. Green, how did you meet Ms. Duncan? How did I meet her? Well, it was New Year's night. She was out, I was out, of course. I saw her staggering a little bit, walking home alone from the club. I took her home. Then we just talked for a little bit, exchanged numbers. Then shortly thereafter, you guys began dating? I don't have sex. I'm not a sexually active person. We all know it's a norm to ask a woman you newly met if she has a man before you make advances towards her. But if she lies about it and you believe her, you get played from the start. Mr. Green's reaction from hearing his woman confess her promiscuous acts to the court shows he's been played from the very beginning. He knew I was talking to someone, but I told him we broke up, but I was still talking to him. All right, so, so you, you, you basically lied and told him you weren't talking to the guy anymore, but you were. Yes. And and you weren't just talking to him? No. You were still having sex with him too? Yes. See, I didn't All know right. that. I didn't know nothing about a relationship. As a sexually inactive man in his 50s, Mr. Green has never fathered a child. So it's no surprise he was wide-eyed when his girlfriend got pregnant. But could the baby be a genuine blessing in disguise or a jab at his infertility? So I called Mr. Green. You did? Yes. He's the first person you called? Yes. And so what was your reaction? Were you happy? I just couldn't believe it. I was in shock. You were 54 years old. Yes. You never yes, had Your another Honor. child. No, Your Honor. So you were in a bit of a shock. That's why I was in shock. To fuel his doubts further, Mr. Green claims he wasn't present at the child's birth because he wasn't informed. What's more is that his name isn't on the birth certificate. Now, why didn't you invite the man you claimed is responsible for your pregnancy to your delivery, Ms. Duncan? This sounds like she had another candidate and was weighing her options for the child's paternity. I figured that if I'm supposed to be the child's father, I would have been there at the time of birth. My name would be on the birth certificate, Your Honor. And in fact, while she was pregnant, I was informed that she would call me. I said, well, call me when you get ready to have the child. I would like to cut the cord. In her defense, Ms. Duncan claims Mr. Green never wanted to be there as he didn't show any interest in the pregnancy from the beginning. But guess what? Someone else stepped up. Who else but the other guy she claimed she stopped talking to? 
And he did more than just showing up at the hospital. Your Honor, he wasn't nowhere around me. During my pregnancy, this other guy, he stepped up. So that's a lie, no. Your Honor, that's a lie. I was there, but not there like you want me to be. Okay, I made that's... a mistake, I was with the other guy. That part is true, but I told you I had around. a thing about hospitals. You wouldn't believe how Mr. Green found out about the other guy's existence. My oh my. It's clear his woman took advantage of his softness, or what gave her the confidence to tell him the way she did. Even the timing was wrong. Of pregnancy or yes. when the baby was born? Six or seven months during pregnancy. And that's why I found out the baby may be who she said it may be. So how did you break that news, Miss Duncan? You know I had a... a no, you a, didn't. Yes, I did. You told me about six or seven months after you was pregnant. You said the baby may not be yours. It may be you know who. Oh, that wasn't the end of the humiliation Mr. Green faced. Imagine returning from a fun day with your family and a stranger claims to be your kid's father. This is beyond heartbreaking. Words can't describe how broken Mr. Green is right now in court. He's literally fighting to hold the tears back. Mr. Green, when you say you know who, did you ever meet this other guy? Not too afterwards. I don't know if it was a birthday or Mother's Day, and he was outside waiting for her, and that kind of hurt. And he said, I come to see my daughter, my daughter. And that's what, like, embarrassing, you know. He was already there waiting for her to come home. Ms. Duncan claims the other guy was there for her during the whole process, which explains why he felt so entitled. However, Mr. Green was nowhere to be found. Although he was hurt, which is understandable, he should have been there for her for the baby's sake. Right now, both of them are definitely guilty of several several wrongdoings. The other guy was around all the way through my pregnancy. Really? Yes. Was he at the birth too? Yes. So while he was sitting around waiting for the phone to ring, I called him the other guy was... answered. He, uh, oh, so hold I... on now. If the other guy was there, you called him and he didn't answer? Did you already... You gonna have them both there? I called him. No. No, Your Honor, no. In Mr. Green's absence, Ms. Duncan decided to make a strong move. She gave the other guy the authority to stand as the child's legal father. That's why he was so confident the day they crossed paths. And now she claims she did that to mess with both men. The moment of truth is upon us. So this is you in the hospital with your beautiful new baby? Yes, Your Honor. And the other gentleman with you. Yes, Your Honor. And so you decided just to put his name on the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. I was messing with both of them. It's a possibility he could be the father as well. It's time to know if Mr. Green is truly the baby's biological father or not. If he isn't, it will crush him to his bones. But let's get it over with. Eternity of two-year-old Angel Bryant. Mr. Ronald Green, you are not her father. I'm so sorry. Mostly sorry for Angel. Miss Duncan, are we certain it is the other gentleman? Yes, uh no other possibility. No, Your Honor. Miss Salen, today's plaintiff, has been playing the role of father and mother to her daughter since she gave birth to her. Alive and well, Mr. Tolliver, the potential baby daddy, wants nothing to do with the child. Now they are both in court to confirm the baby's paternity. If he turns out to be the baby's biological father, he will pay every dime of the child's support. Miss Allen! You claim the defendant got you pregnant and now refuses to do anything for your two-year-old daughter, Novella, who's been diagnosed with severe allergies, leaving you in financial and emotional distress. You claim today's DNA test will prove that he is Novella's father and you need him to step up. Yes, Your Honor. The defendant has never for once tried to play his fatherly role for the little girl. No child support, no visitation, not a care in the world. Now that's very cruel. What reasons could he have to neglect his responsibilities? Ms. Allen, what has he done for your daughter? Absolutely nothing, Honor. Nothing? Nothing. Wow. Well. Has he paid any child support at all? No, Your Honor. Been involved in her life? No, Your Honor. Come to visit her? No, Your Honor. I have all, I have several reasons that I can prove that I'm not the father. It's funny how mommy and daddy don't like being around each other. Since the child's birth, both parties have made little attempts to do a DNA test to confirm her paternity. But they surely enjoyed being around each other when they had the sex that led to the pregnancy, didn't they? I tried to get her to do a DNA test. For instance, just the other day, said she's not going to do the test. Really? She, yeah. Have you been avoiding the test, Ms. Allen? Um, no, I haven't not been avoiding the test. Why haven't you taken it if he's volunteering? Um, he's the reason why. I honestly do not want to go take a test by myself with him. 
Apparently, the plaintiff had been trying to work things out with her alleged baby daddy, but that didn't sit well with his new girlfriend. She made sure there was nothing to settle between them. But you don't have to be present at the same time she, to get the DNA testing done. She texts him saying that she misses him, and you know, I accidentally saw that. It was on Facebook Messenger um, that she missed him. So I don't know where she's getting this. She Whatever. doesn't want to be with him. I, I, you know, it confuses me. At this point, Judge Lauren wants more clarity on the nature of their relationship during the window of conception. But not for the first time today. Their responses contradict one another. It appears that they both have different views on how serious their relationship was. Isn't this just interesting? You two were in a sexual relationship at some yeah, point, yes. am I correct? Yes. Was it during the window of time that Novella was conceived? Yes, ma'am. How long were you together? A couple months, not long. It wasn't a heavy, steady relationship. We weren't. So you weren't committed? But yeah, we was we, committed. We seen each other on the weekends every now and again. It's no. not like we were. We lived in different counties. The defendant claims Ms. Allen gave him some inappropriate details about her sex life after a few drinks on their first night together. Funny enough, she doesn't remember saying those things. Well, in wine, there is truth. Now we are getting why he didn't feel committed to the relationship from the onset. But someone needs to tell this man that it doesn't change the fact that he could be the baby's biological father. Yes, we were having drinks, talking, and I didn't really, I don't want to hear about that. You know, I don't want to hear who you had sex <laughs> with, but I mean, you know, when, I mean, it's, alcohol does that. Alcohol opens people up, that's what she told me. And I mean, the first night we met, you know, we had sex, you know, you know, I've heard that's, I'm not the only one that she's been like that. As it turns out, Ms. Allen didn't help the situation at all. Could you believe she didn't invite the defendant to the hospital while she was having the delivery? Guess what she did instead? The plaintiff had another man with her at the hospital during the delivery. Oh boy. She's saying that, and it's on the Facebook. This what are these pictures her? of, Mr. Tolliver? That's Miss Allen with the guy she was seeing at the time that she's telling me that so this, this is, is her, her in the in the hospital having birth and that's the man there on the her, phone in the corner her boyfriend or she's telling me that that's gonna be novella's father the whole situation is so confusing right now it's hard to tell if mr tolliver is indeed the baby's biological father or the other guy but another askable question is this did the plaintiff sleep with someone else other than the defendant during the window of conception when you got pregnant were you dating anyone else at the time no on. Did you call Mr. Tolliver and tell him you were pregnant? Yes, I did. What was his response? I called him when I was in the doctor's office, told him I was pregnant, and his basic response was, it was not his problem, it was my problem. In her defense, Ms. Allen claims she called Mr. Tolliver after the baby was born, but he gave her an uncultured response, defending himself. The alleged baby father claims she only reaches out to him whenever she has relationship issues with her boyfriend, so that's why he responded to her the way he did. Regardless of what he thinks of his ex, he should have considered the baby's well-being and showed up when his presence was demanded. I said, I asked her who the father was. That's what I told her. I said, you need to find out who the father is. And what was the answer? She just said, she said, well, it's mine. I'm, she said, I was the father. But so, it's only when she's getting went in a fight with her boyfriend or breaking up with a boyfriend does she come to me and want me back. After the child was born, she developed severe allergies. These allergies give the defendant more reasons to doubt the kid being his because there are no allergy histories in his family. Isn't that hilarious? For clarity, the judge invites a doctor to the courtroom to explain the connection between allergies and human genetics. So it's hard for us to drop a, a thumbnail and say, oh, you know what? Because of these allergies, her father is... Exactly. We can't do that. No. That's what I needed to know. You know, not willing to do the DNA test. But part that. of your argument was to that you don't have allergies and no one in your family has them. But because she told me, to that, your doubt. told me that the baby had allergies and they had to come from my side of the family. Now we've had enough of the plaintiff and defendant going back and forth with their arguments. It's time for Judge Lauren to read out the test results. Let's get to it. Mr. Tolliver, you are her father. Okay. Are you happy? A little bit, yes, ma'am. Just a little happy. Well, I mean, I, I've always wanted a kid, and, but the other thing is that, I mean, now I want Rachel to understand this. I want, I'm going to be in the baby's life, but, you know, I know you said you're over me, but we're, we're done with the going back and forth, okay? Ms. Ray has been getting child support from two men who are potential fathers to her two-year-old son, Jordan. This right here sounds like a love triangle. 
Today, both men are present in court for the paternity test, and whoever comes out positive gets to pay the child support in full. Now who's the lucky man? Is Ray? Two men claim your two-year-old son, Jordan, calls them daddy. Yes, Your Honor. They also say you've held them both financially responsible for your child. Yes, Your Honor. You say those statements are lies. Yes, Your Honor. So you confess you got caught in a love triangle, and now, though it breaks your heart, you don't know which man fathered your son. Yes, Your Honor. Firstly, how did they get here? Apparently, the plaintiff was initially in a relationship with Mr. Josh Wise. Then they went on a break. And while on the break, she kicked off with Mr. Dave Easton, the other guy. We began um, in the, at the end of the summer in 2011. Me and Mr. Wise was on a break. Um, and Mr. East Ham was a longtime friend of mine, a shoulder to cry on. And we had two different occasions that we had got drunk and partied together. We do not know if we had sex. Contradicting the plaintiff's previous claims, Mr. Easton asserts that he had sex with her more than once. Whoa. So he really was offering Ms. Ray more than a shoulder to cry on whenever she had issues with her main boyfriend. That's so scandalous. Okay. So, Mr. Eastham, was <clears throat> this the one and only time you were intimate with Ms. Ray? No. That's true. No. no. We used to be together for, for here and there, like when me and Josh would split up, Dave was my best friend and there was always a connection, so yeah, he was my go-to person. Funny enough, Mr. Wise didn't realize he was participating in a love triangle the whole time. Wow, how crazy is this? But eventually, his girlfriend broke the news to him because her friendly shoulder was on her neck with claims of being the baby's father. So in a blink of an eye, their relationship went from love triangle to paternity triangle. Mr. Wise Guys, when did you find out about Mr. Eastham and the fact that Ms. Ray was in a sexual relationship with him? That, that is when I told Josh that Dave could possibly be the father, that we had partied together and we do not know what happened. Neither one of us could remember. We've had multiple conversations about it. Something amazing comes into the light when Mr. Easton presents a baby picture of himself and that of Jordan to the court. But hey, looks can be deceiving, you know. Let's not jump into conclusions just yet because Mr. Wise presented his own pair of pictures too. And you couldn't have guessed what transpired. And Mr. Eastham, you <clears throat> actually submitted baby pictures yes, of yourself. Yeah. Mr. Wise, I, now you feel like he looks like you. Do you have evidence of that? Jerome, would you hand that to me? You haven't heard it all. Jordan addresses both men as daddy, so that means he's connected to both of them. But in truth, there can only be one daddy. What a crazy scenario we've got here. Both, he both of daddy. them, both of them. He calls you daddy. daddy. Yeah. He's That's always known me as dad. Yeah, he's, he's called me dad before too though. He calls you dad too. He does He does call me dad sometimes. Ms. Ray isn't hiding the fact that she hopes the DNA results reveal that Mr. Wise is Jordan's father so her family can get back together. But Mr. Easton thinks she's being hypocritical. Now why would he think that? Okay, if they're talking about trying to get their family back and all that, like why hasn't she been trying to do that for two years while, she's, while Jordan has been aging for two years? You instead can... of letting him it was or, never my no. intention to get my family back. You can ask I've Mr. I've heard you say that numerous times. Presumably, Mr. Easton didn't like the fact that the plaintiff only comes to him whenever her relationship got muddy and leaves whenever things are settled. He wants a real relationship with her, but she doesn't see him that way. So that makes him look like the villain in their love triangle story. Easton, is there any truth to the fact that you wanted to sabotage their relationship nah, and you didn't want to That's work? a lie. I never you wanted to sabotage anybody's you relationship. Oh. So you felt like she really cared about you. Yeah, I mean, I, and I know she still does. I'm not and saying she don't. You really wanted a relationship. It's clear you wanted a relationship right. with her. Of course. Another twist to the story is that after Mr. Wise learned the truth about his girlfriend's infidelity, they split up. And since then, she and her son have been living with Mr. Easton. Now this is becoming really confusing. Why move into his house with Jordan if you don't think he's his biological father? Here, so right now, here, for the last year and a half, two years, years you've been together solid is that dating no like we live together stay together oh you live yeah. together yeah like i'm saying and I've been, wait i've been jordan there raising is that boy two. Right there. yeah jordan was two months old when me and mr y split up it was right after i told him there was a possibility dave could be the father the deeper we go into this love triangle story, the crazier and more confusing it gets. I think it's high time we heard Judge Lauren read out the test results. Here we go! Mr. Wise. 
is his father. I told you, I told you. I told everybody, I knew. How do you feel, Mr. Wise? Happy, amazing, I love that kid. Ms. Brown has known Mr. Burks to be her father since childhood, but in court today, he's claiming he's not her biological father. Regardless of his claims, one thing is certain if the result proves him wrong, he's got a lot of child support debt to pay. Mr. Burks, you claim to be more than $26,000 in debt due to child support for the defendant, Ms. Brown, who you say is definitely not your biological daughter. Ms. Brown, you state that for 30 years, you've known only one man to be your father and you are devastated that he is now claiming you are not his biological daughter. The question is, why did Mr. Burks wait this long before coming out to state his claims? If he had doubts, then he should have found ways to clear them in the early stages, not now. Presently, he's got this young lady emotional as she tells the court how he makes offensive statements about the time he spent with her mother. No, Papa, that's unacceptable. You need to do better. How do you feel about Mr. Berg's denying that you are his daughter after all these years? I am hurt. I'm disappointed. I don't even know how to feel. I can't even believe somebody even have a question of how I feel. I'm 30 years old. 30 years old! And I have to deal with this? You know, and then, then he brings up talking about it was a one-night stand with my mom and all that kind of stuff like that. It wasn't no one-night stand. Eventually, Papa spills the beans on how he met the defendant's mother, but Ms. Brown is having none of it and claims her mother told her otherwise. It seems the air conditioners aren't working properly. Or can someone explain where the heat in the courtroom is coming from? And we went to a hotel. I did my thing, but I, I didn't, I did not, uh... You didn't, okay. like, y'all had a I'm relationship. Okay. Yeah, they had a I relationship. I didn't have no relationship. Yeah, you did. Yes, you, you did. Wasn't you wasn't there, how you know? You wanted to you be wasn't even there. Cause she told me. I she know gonna for lie. a fact because... She's not gonna lie. It took Judge Lawrence Lauren's intervention to calm Ms. Brown's nerves as she's not holding back in her heated argument with her alleged father. So he continues his explanation on how he found out about her pregnancy and the effect it had on his marriage. Now we're getting a clearer picture of what his relationship was like with the young woman's mother. I'm back in the house with her. I'm at work. My ex-wife get a phone call. It's her mother on the phone saying she's pregnant by me. So my house get tore up all over again. Bam, I'm out the door again. So in the process, she said I'm the father, so I go find her. Apparently, Mr. Burke's name isn't written on Ms. Brown's birth certificate, and this strengthens his belief that she is not his biological daughter. As believable as his claims sound, they are not enough to get him off the child support debt because his name is on the child support document. Only one thing can, and that's the outcome of the DNA test. My name is not on the birth certificate. I'm not a father. That's evidence you'd like to present? Yes, ma'am. Ron, will you pass that to me, please? But my name is on the child support paper. This is Miss Brown's birth certificate listed yes. as father, no one. None. And yet, you also have a paper that indicates that there is an order establishing the parent-child relationship and you are responsible for child support. Wait a minute. How did they get his name to be on the child support document when it isn't on the birth certificate? As it turns out, while Mr. Burks was away, there was a court case and the outcome caused his name to be on the child support document. The further we get into this, the more absurd it gets. At some point, did you acknowledge paternity or was there a court case that you didn't show up? Exactly. Okay. That's what happened. So I you're named the, the father by away. default. I was away. They had the court without me even being there. They had already been to court, determined I, I was behind a real reach of $40,000. In a counterattack, Ms. Brown presents a photograph of herself and Papa's other daughter. Now, this is where it gets more interesting. The two ladies in the photograph look alike. But you know what we always say, looks can be deceiving. This isn't enough to confirm that they are biological siblings. That's evidence to prove that we look like look, y'all look up those I don't noses. Think so. no. And you wanna go around saying I'm because I'm bigger than everybody. You sound like a fool for saying that. You are. That's the only thing you got? You are. This is a picture of you and Mr. Burke's other daughter. Yes. One and you're saying you see the family similarity without with the nose this to issue. me, the noses is I don't like, think so. Lips are like like that. Initially, it seemed like Mr. Burks was getting an edge over his alleged daughter in their arguments, but his victory was short-lived when Judge Lauren learned he tried to keep Miss Brown and her mom a secret. 
for some evident reasons, he never wanted to be her father. Because, you know, I didn't, I wanted to keep it hush-hush. I wanted to deal with it myself. I wanted to make sure I went to her mother, I gave her money, I bought diapers and everything. So try. basically, you didn't want the fact that you had cheated on your wife to come out. Exactly, yeah. Right, okay. Judge Lauren can't help but notice the disconnection between the possible father and daughter, and that prompts her to ask questions. Presumably, there's something about Ms. Brown that Mr. Burks detests. Hundreds of families I've helped, I've never really seen this much complete disconnection between a possible father and a daughter at this age. So I want to understand how this happened, how we got here. Enough with all the drama. It's time to hear the test result. Brace yourselves for impact. Mr. Burks, you are the father. See, I told you and you stay up there and you'll be like this. That what you gonna do? See, it's all about my lifestyle. But you know what after this? He don't have to worry about me. I promise that he don't have to worry about me because if it took all this for you to do this to me. Ms. Backus appears in court today against her alleged father, Mr. Wooten, and stepsister, Ms. Smith, regarding a paternity dispute. If she wins this case, she demands that her potential father and siblings apologize to her for all their wrongdoings. That's not all. The outcome of the test will determine whether or not Mr. Wooten will have a chunk of his monthly earnings chopped off for child support. Oof! Ms. Ms. Smith, you and your father, Mr. Wooten, are suing to prove Ms. Backus is not his biological daughter. You say your dad owes more than $92,000 in back child support for a child who isn't his and is on the verge of losing everything because his income is being garnished by 50% each month to pay off that debt. Yes, Your Honor. So there is a rumor within the family that Ms. Backus's mother was playing Mr. Wooten from the beginning of their relationship. Now where is all that coming from? As it seems, the Wooten family refused to claim Ms. Backus because of the amount of debts daddy owes in child support. But is the young woman to be blamed for that? Primarily through the actions of her mother by uh, being very deceitful with my father from the very beginning of their relationship. They initially did not start uh, garnishing his wages. It wasn't until later when he was um, started drawing Social Security that they began to garnish half of his wages. Now there's an argument between the ladies on how long Papa Wooten and Ms. Backus's mom were together in their relationship. This argument raises huge questions on the young lady's paternity. Eventually, Daddy cuts in and sheds the light on how things actually went between them. Your Honor, my father never received any paperwork requesting his presence to have a DNA test done. He was not requested to come to court to prove that he was not her father. My father knows I'm things. his child. And guess what I was conceived? I was conceived when a year later after him and my mother was together. And they was together for seven years. So you tell me. They were not together for seven years. There is so much tension in the courtroom right now. Mr. Wooten claims he had no doubts at first when Ms. Backus's mother told him she was pregnant. But along the line, his doubts began. Hearing Daddy say he doubted her mom made the young woman lose her cool and not for the first time today the arguments began again so when did you start doubting that when she had my mama said i was a player she tag. became pregnant again year uh, <laughs> later and she wanted to get back together when i got back together with her i just i'd asked her has she been seeing anybody else before we got together and she said no we got together three weeks after we was together. Then she Father, no she disrespect pregnant. and not to interrupt you, but my mother told me I sat on the couch. Ms. Smith and her alleged stepsister have been on each other's throat since the beginning of this case, and they are not backing down now. She claims she and her siblings knew a child was born at the end of Papa Wooten's relationship with Miss Backus's mother. However, they never spoke about her amongst themselves. Now this raises the question, could it be that they never accepted her from the onset because they never really accepted their father's relationship with her mother? Your mother, when I when I met your mother three weeks into knowing her, she wanted to know why. She I told me y'all was together a whole year and then I was Alundra, born a year later. Alundra, please. Man, Dad, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm not even feeling nothing that y'all saying right now. That's why I brought y'all here and we finna find out the truth. Cause you and Cece will apologize to you're me not, and my mother today. I do not today. owe you an you're apology. Not yeah, you one. are. You gonna the, find, you gonna see one. No, you gonna see no. one. This is where it gets interesting. The young woman presented a handwritten birth certificate to the judge. In this certificate, it is stated that Papa Wooten is her father. But the original certificate presented by Papa states otherwise. True enough, my mama was wrong for handwriting it in. 
because he was not there when I was born. He came later. She wrote it in because she know who her baby daddy is. That's one thing well, my mama do know. Well, let me see this evidence. This is your birth certificate? That was my birth certificate. But when I filed for my new one, it, it, it came up blank on his name. That means she wrote it in. This case gets more intense. The deeper we look into it, Ms. Backus keeps providing more evidence to prove that the man in question is indeed her father. Apparently, there are baby pictures of her and Mr. Wooten, as well as her alleged half-sister. This means she was accepted into the family as a baby, but was kicked out as an adult. It don't seem like that he denied me. And in this picture, where my sister holding me next to my mother, didn't seem like they denied me. Will you hand those up, please? Please explain to me, what is this a picture that of? That is my mother. That's me in the middle, and that's Cece on the end. That's why I can't never stop loving her. And I, she, she making me mad right now, but I still got love, because I am my sister's keeper for life. The hatred for Ms. Backus's mom isn't just within Papa Wooten's legal children. Even Granny hated her and never accepted her child as her granddaughter. But on her dying bed, her son confessed some things to her, and that changed how she felt about her alleged grandchild. Now we get that at some point amidst the family drama, the young woman was accepted into the family as an adult. But the question still remains, if it wasn't for the huge child support debt, why did they suddenly decide to exclude Ms. Backus from the family rights? So, Mr. Wooten, well, well, you know that's a lie. That. I, I know she felt like she had a part of that. Why that came about is my mother was, was dying, and I, you know, would not deny her. You know, in other words, my mother for years kept saying, you know she's not your daughter. That's right. And up to that point, when I told my mother, I said, yes, she is, you know. And uh, <laughs> she, that's when my mother just decided to apologize to her. As the case goes back and forth, M.S. Smith decides to drop a bomb. She claims that Ms. Backus's mom had secret affairs with other men when she was living in Papa Wooten's house. Now, that's a strong allegation, Ms. Smithy. Due to this reason, she always had doubts about the young woman being her father's biological daughter. But if she's right, then there are dark clouds hovering over Ms. Backus's paternity. During the time that her mother was, was with my father, when my father left for work, because Gayla, she did not work, when she was at our home, she would have men come to our house. You 12 years old, you need to say, okay, what you not gonna do? Let's calm down, lady, let's calm down. What you not gonna do? She would tell me that that was either her cousin or one of my dad's friends. At this point, I think we've heard just about enough from both sides. All the arguments between the two ladies are not as important as the DNA test result. Is Mr. Wooten really Ms. Backus's biological father? There's only one way to find out. Don't drop your phone just yet. Mr. Wooten Jr., you are not her father. I know this was not the answer you were expecting. No, it wasn't, but I and had to I, do it. I had to do yes, it because I did. was tired of the rumors. I was tired of being treated. So now I know why I got treated like I am, and I'm good. I want to I wanna apologize to the Wooten Pryor Clayton family for my mom's BS. CC, I came here with the confidence of knowing he was my father and knowing you was my sister. Paternity court, where emotions run high and the truth often hides in the shadows. Buckle up as we dive into another episode filled with twists, drama, and heart-stopping revelations. Our first entry features a shocking tale of uncertainty, lies, and a battle for paternity that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Mr. Ahmad thought he had finally hit the parenting jackpot. For him, this was the moment he had been waiting for all his life. He arrived in the court, fully charged and ready to claim the baby girl he believed was his. But wait, things were about to take a shocking turn. Mr. Ahmad, you say you were overjoyed to be a father after the birth of your first child, 22-month-old Nevea. However, you claim that you were crushed when the defendant later told you another man could be her dad. You are here today to prove you are Nevea's father. Is that correct? Ahmad was over the moon with the baby news. After years of anticipation, this felt like his big break. He was ecstatic at the thought of being a father, something he had always dreamed of. The joy of knowing that he had a daughter filled his heart, and he imagined all the special moments they would share. But as soon as he started feeling this happiness, things got complicated. Ahmad's elation was clouded by doubt, a nagging suspicion that gnawed at his excitement, leaving him in a state of uncertainty. Could this really be his daughter? The more he thought about it, the more unclear everything became. To be my first child, so I was overjoyed. Um, 
She was high risk, so she couldn't work. So I, what I did, I tried to do as best as a man that I could do. To and you help. all were in what kind of relationship? Committed or were you just casual friends or what? Boyfriend and girlfriend. Boyfriend and girlfriend, okay. But then we learn. Ahmad wasn't the only one in this mess. Mommy had her own set of commitment issues, to say the least. She called their relationship nothing more than a friendship. Ouch. Imagine the shock Ahmad must have felt hearing that. It was like being blindsided by a truck. Here he was, imagining that he was building a family, and all along, she viewed their connection as nothing serious. The look on his face said it all. This was not the love story he thought he was in. It's like a rom-com, except there's no romance and definitely no comedy here. It was more of a friendship for me. Um, I loved Mr. Ahmad, but I wasn't in love with him. It was just, he was there for me, and I needed somebody to be there for me. And how I found out she was pregnant, she came one morning uh, and knocked on my window. And, and just when Ahmad's heart was swelling with hope, Ms. Day started whispering doubts. She openly questioned his paternity skills, throwing shade at him every chance she got. For Ahmad, this wasn't just about proving he was the father. It was a test of his emotional strength. This was a full-blown emotional roller coaster. One moment he thought he might have a daughter. The next, he was being painted as someone unfit to claim a child. He had to navigate the space between love and heartbreak, hoping that the court would give him the answers he so desperately needed. She was at my residence every day. That's not true. We didn't even get along that much. I was not at his house every day. We argued so much, I never lived with him. Like, he would, when I spent the night, some nights he would kick me out at 2 in the morning. Why are you up so upset now? Because you felt, you feel... I just feel like he trying to make me seem like a bad person when No, ma'am. But hold up. Turns out Ahmad wasn't so innocent himself. Ms. Day wasn't going to let him off the hook easily. She started spilling some serious tea about his behavior. Oh, yeah. She dropped bombs that could bring any man down. Accusations flew fast and furious, revealing details of their relationship that painted Ahmad in a very different light. But he wasn't about to let it slide. He fought back, trying to defend his actions. It was a battle of wills right in front of us, and the drama just kept escalating. Another possible father. I've never known another man. She's been with me. I went to work. When I, I to told work, him, and he I was came intoxicated, home. and he kicked me out the same night that I told him. I disagree with that because now I feel like you're trying to make me feel some kind of Ahmad was trapped in a she might be mine nightmare despite everything he was still involved in the baby's life as much as possible. But when it came time to sign the birth certificate, everything came to a head. Ms. Day had different plans. She refused to let him sign, and Ahmad was left stunned, wondering what on earth had just happened. It felt like his world was crumbling, and the fatherhood dream was slipping away faster than he could grasp it. What could he possibly do next? It's the type of twist you don't see coming. Sign a birth certificate. I didn't let you. You did it on your own. How did he do it on his own? Did the hospital get the they information asked, from you? No, they asked him, was he the father? And he told them yes. And they asked him, did he want to sign a birth certificate? And he told them yes. And what did you say at the time? I was As the court dug deeper into the case, it became clear that this situation was far more complex than it appeared. The judge explored the finer details of hospital protocol, revealing a critical piece of information. A father can only sign the birth certificate if the mother provides the necessary consent and details. This raised an important question. Was Ms. Day actively blocking Ahmad from being listed as the father? Was this all part of some larger plan? The tension in the courtroom grew with each passing moment, and it felt like the situation was on the verge of spiraling out of control. We actually contacted the hospital because we wanted to find out what the protocol was for the execution of birth certificates. And per the hospital where Nevea was born, the procedure is, is when they admit a mother of a child into the maternity ward, she is asked to fill out a form for the birth certificate, including... But here's the kicker. Everything flipped when the baby stopped resembling Ahmad. This was the moment that turned everything upside down. Ahmad had always harbored doubts, but seeing that the baby's features no longer matched his was a blow he hadn't anticipated. Ms. Day, however, maintained her stance, insisting that she had been honest all along. But actions speak louder than words, and her social media painted a very different picture. Posts, comments, and pictures revealed information that suggested she hadn't been entirely truthful. Was there more to the story than Ahmad could have ever imagined? Father's Day to my child's father. Even though she's not here yet, He's already amazing. He takes damn good care of us. I'm proud to call him mine. That's because he was there. He was there. He wanted to be her father. So that was before 
she was born. What's even crazier? The unveiling of a second baby daddy, Mr. Flowers, another man who could potentially be the father. His involvement complicated things even further, and Ahmad's frustration grew as it became clear that Ms. Day had a deeper connection with this man. Ahmad was not happy about this revelation, and understandably so. What started as a simple paternity test was now a tangled web of relationships, lies, and secrets. The tension was thick as the court tried to make sense of this increasingly chaotic situation. That's who she know as her father. That's who she know as her dad. Where's the other man? Do you know where he is? Yes. Does he want to be a part of her life? Yes. He does? He takes care of her. You live with Oh! Him. Right. I think I want to talk to this other gentleman. He is joining... Finally, the moment of truth arrived. The results were in, and the entire courtroom was on edge. Ahmad's face was a mix of anxiety and hope as he prepared himself for the final revelation. Would his worst fears be confirmed, or would there be an unexpected twist that no one saw coming. The air was thick with anticipation as the results were read aloud and the outcome was set to change everything. Let's dive into the results and see who walks away with the truth. Ahmad versus Day pertaining to whether Mr. Ahmad or Mr. Flowers is the biological father of 22-month-old Nevea Ahmad. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Flowers. Our next entry features a shocking tale of deception, chaos, and the ultimate paternity test showdown. In this case, viewers are in for a roller coaster ride with Mr. Scott and Ms. Kalon, who together bring a whirlwind of accusations and unexpected twists. From the outset, it's clear that this is not just a simple paternity dispute, but a complex web of emotions, uncertainty, and conflicting narratives. Mr. Scott believes that he has a rightful place in this child's life, while Ms. Kalon's actions suggest a deeper story filled with secrets. As the drama unfolds in the courtroom, the audience will witness a battle that challenges the very fabric of trust, love, and responsibility, leaving everyone on the edge of their seats, eager to discover the truth behind the chaos. Mr. Scott is no stranger to the courtroom. He's a repeat offender in paternity court. Having already faced the paternity test ringer before, Scott finds himself back in familiar territory, but this time with an entirely new case. His demeanor speaks of a man worn down by past experiences. Little does he know that Ms. Kalon is about to present her own version of events, leaving everyone in shock. Mr. Scott, welcome back. How you doing? Now, you, doing? you previously appeared in this court, and it was determined that you now have seven children by yes. four women. Yes, sure. Uh, you're here today. <laughs> Ms. Kalon enters the courtroom with an almost eerie calmness, leaving everyone questioning how she managed to maintain her composure through such a tumultuous ordeal. However, as viewers soon discover, her story is anything but serene. It is packed with vanishing acts and an online romance that spiraled out of control, leading to a whirlwind of chaos and heartache. The contrast between her tranquil demeanor and the emotional turmoil that surrounds her creates a palpable tension in the courtroom. As the layers of her narrative begin to unravel, it becomes clear that the truth behind her calm exterior is far more complicated than it seems. Was excited when he found out you were pregnant, but then only a few months before you gave birth, Mr. Scott disappeared. Number, everything. You argue that the only reason he's denying your baby is because you've since learned he was in another relationship. Plenty of them, I've the heard. The entire time you were together. That's not true. Ms. Kalan, yes. your That's not true. counter... Their relationship began like many modern romances. Online, Scott and Kalon connected through the digital world, navigating the virtual landscape that often blurs the lines of reality. After a few weeks of chatting, they decided to take things offline, eager to explore the chemistry they felt in person. For about three weeks to a month, they played the role of two people falling fast, lost in the thrill of new love and the excitement of their budding connection. However, as anyone who watches paternity court knows, things are rarely as simple as they seem. Behind the initial allure of their romance lurked complexities and unresolved issues that would soon unravel their relationship, revealing the often messy truth of modern love. We met online. We chatted for about three weeks, I'll say three weeks three to a weeks. month, something like that, you know. So she came to visit me. She came to my city. She came to visit me. You know, we hung out. We spent time. We had a nice time that night. No big deal, you know. It was nice. It was nice. She went to sleep. I happened to go through her phone. I went through her phone. On the first night. Trust issues soon arose, leading to accusations of phone snooping 
gossiping and deceit that cast a shadow over their once promising relationship. The rapid pace at which their connection developed left little room for a solid foundation, and the cracks began to show. What started as a whirlwind romance quickly spiraled into chaos. Things took a dark turn, unveiling hidden insecurities and misunderstandings that escalated tensions between them. If Romeo and Juliet's story was tragic, this tale feels more like a soap opera gone terribly wrong, filled with melodrama, unexpected twists, and heartbreak that seemed almost scripted. Their journey, rife with emotional upheaval, transformed from a passionate love story into a cautionary tale about the dangers of rushing into love without addressing the underlying issues. Went to sleep, I happened to go through her phone. I went through her oh, phone. The first night? Yeah, well, you know, the, the reason why I went through your phone, the reason why I went through prior. your phone, He's, phone. He had no she reason to go through my phone. Her phone didn't ring all day, my so daughter, I got suspicious. So As the courtroom drama unfolds, Ms. Kalon reveals the true extent of the chaos surrounding their relationship. According to her, Scott went all out for her, showering her with affection, but his narrative of insecurity was unfounded. She asserts that she got pregnant the very first time she visited him, a shocking twist that deepens their tumultuous story. Her testimony paints a picture of a relationship filled with passion and mystery as she navigates the complexities while countering Scott's claims. The atmosphere in the courtroom is thick with tension as both sides present present their versions of the truth, leaving everyone eager to see how this dramatic saga will unfold. Okay, I, mean, okay. I didn't go just jump off and go see him. Yeah, we did. was talking for months, okay. Okay. back and forth, like and, and um, you know, I, I paid for my trip to go out there, never paid for nothing. I paid when we wasn't at his mother's house. Scott didn't come to court empty-handed. He prepared what he believed were facts that would clear his name. However, Ms. Kalen was ready to counter with her own revelations. The courtroom realized this wasn't just just a matter of he said, she said. Other men, male parts, okay? For real? Pictures of other male parts, and it was another, she was like, well, I'm finna go to Lancaster to visit a friend, a family member. And she did it and like that? Pictures no, of that, male, and the, other people male parts. The guy parts, responds like, I mean, the guy my says, well. My play with my phone, your honor. There was nothing like that. Ms. Kalon portrayed Scott as the biggest liar of all time. As the details of their relationship came to light, viewers learned of motels, secretive meetings, and the mystery surrounding their whirlwind romance. What began as a seemingly innocent online connection had turned into a tangled mess of lies, leading to Ms. Kalon's pregnancy, or not. Only science would tell. The doubt was substantiated when Scott's name was not on the child's birth certificate. Like jinxing me. Because she's sick. That's yes, what she said. She called yes. me and said, you jinxed me. I said, well, you sick. You don't want up. But come on. Da, 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 da. You got kids. You know. You know. Come on. I said, you're pregnant. And Never then we're supposed to name the baby. No if the baby's mine, then why the baby don't kids. have my last name? It's the because same thing. Because he wasn't there. He you know, like, why wasn't I there? Why am I going to put you on the birth certificate? Because I had my reason right, and my dad. After so much back and forth, it was time to announce the results. And let's just say Ms. Kalon's confidence soon became deflated. In the case of Scott versus Kalan, as it pertains to four-month-old Ezra Edward, Mr. Scott, you are not the father. I apologize. I guess my assumptions was right. Now, if you thought things couldn't get more dramatic, let's consider Mr. Vadabonkur. This man was done with his wife's compulsive lies and the emotional turmoil they caused. He insisted that his wife had been involved with another man when she conceived their baby. From the very start, Mr. Vadabonkur was adamant. This wasn't just about proving paternity. It was about exposing the deceit that had shattered his life and trust. He felt betrayed and needed the truth to reclaim his peace of mind. The courtroom was set for a showdown, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Vad Bonker versus Fernari. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Mr. Vad Bonker, you have petitioned the court to prove to Ms. Fernari that you are not the biological father of her one-year-old son, Dawson. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you can prove you're not. Mrs. Fernari didn't make things easy. She was quick to dismiss her husband's accusations. Even as the courtroom buzzed with the tension of their confrontation, the air was thick with emotions, making it clear that this was no ordinary dispute. Mr. Vadaboncourt, however, wasn't about to back down. He painted a picture of a relationship built on a foundation of lies, with his wife's infidelity at the center. While he believed they'd been together barely months, she suggested it had been two years. He claimed she had numerous relationships behind his back, 
And now, he wanted the truth to come out once and for all. I want her out of your life for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fernari, though you admit to sleeping with two other men, you say there's no doubt that Mr. Vadbonker is your son's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Vadbonker, tell me about your relationship with Ms. Fernari. One thing was true, though. She had indeed been cheating, and she confessed to it herself. The difference was, it wasn't multiple times, according to her. So, who then was telling the truth? We'll find out soon enough. He hear about you being with other men. Um, I did tell him. You told him? Yes, I did. What did you tell him? That I had sex with another guy while he was away. So, Mr. Vat... The drama escalated when Mr. Vadaboncourt revealed that he had been approached by one of his friends, who confessed to being one of his wife's alleged lovers. This revelation, he claimed, was the final straw, proof that she had been unfaithful. The courtroom erupted in an uproar, with emotions running high on all sides, each person caught in the storm of conflicting narratives. You know, Miss Frenari is out there cheating on you. I'm one of the guys she cheated on you with. All right, now, I let it go. I was thinking he is mine. Now, I get to talking to another guy, and he tells me he's had sex with her, and I look at Dawson, and I look at him, and I'm thinking it's his kid. How did that affect you? I was sick. The surprise thickened when Mr. Vadaboncourt's sister came out to testify, siding with Mrs. Fernari, believing it was in the best interest of the child. This unexpected turn added another layer of complexity to an already tense situation. Mrs. Fernari, visibly shaken, did not deny the allegations. Then she stepped foot on Chaos's gas, claiming her actions were in response to Mr. Vadaboncourt cheating first. This bombshell sent shockwaves through the courtroom. Bonker? Yes, that's my brother. Oh, so you're the sister that told him about the cheating? But you're standing with Ms. Fernari today? It's about this little boy right here. Tell that's, me what you that's know. That's what it's about. Tell me what you know. One night after we had all been drinking, um, she slept with one of the people that came to our little get-together. The drama heightened when Mrs. Knox, David's fiance, stepped in, transforming the court from peace to chaos as the three women took the stand. The crux of the matter lay in their attempts to secure a paternity test, but Ms. Fernari had taken their requests with a pinch of salt, leading to even more frustration and accusations. You went out and went to the bar with two other girls and had sex with them. That's irrelevant, Your Honor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we, we so were, why we our son was the in the time. hospital? We, we was not together at the time. She asked me to come up yes, and see we Dawson. Yes, we were together. So I did come and see Dawson. She tries to say we've been together for three years. After so much argument and emotional turmoil, the moment arrived to reveal the truth of the matter. As the judge read the results, you could cut the tension with a knife. The truth was finally out, and the outcome. Let's just say it left everyone in that courtroom, and probably everyone watching, completely stunned. They diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Vadbonker versus Fernari, when it comes to 12-month-old Dawson Fernari, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Vadbonker, you are the father. That's you. In this dramatic episode of Paternity Court, we are thrust into the world of Funzie vs. Irvin, where secrets and emotions collide in a high-stakes battle for paternity. Ms. Funzie enters the courtroom with a mix of determination and anxiety, ready to confront Mr. Irvin over her claims about their child, asserting that the child is indeed theirs. The air is thick with tension as she prepares to lay bare her truth, hoping to validate her claims and put an end to the uncertainty that has loomed over their relationship. All eyes are on her and the stakes couldn't be higher as the truth hangs in the balance. Good day, everyone. Ms. Funzie, you have opened your case to save your family. You are here to prove your one-month-old baby, Joachim Irvin, is your boyfriend, Mr. Irvin's biological son. You say you and Mr. Irvin have two other children and you plan to have this third child. However, Mr. Irvin wasn't having it, as she had alluded to having an affair a few weeks before the pregnancy. The atmosphere was charged, and the tension palpable as both parties prepared to air their grievances. You blame his sister for stirring up his ridiculous doubts, is that correct? Yes, sure. Mr. Irvin, you say that Miss Funzie confessed to having an affair weeks before you learned of her pregnancy, and you- She revealed that cheating had been a trend in their relationship, noting that Mr. Irvin had cheated on her earlier. Since he confessed, she argued it was only fair for her to do the same. She then reinforced that it was only a one-night stand, trying to minimize the impact of her actions. He, uh, when he, he had told me he cheated, and I, I would feel like I should come to him because I cheated. So how soon after you found out she was cheating, confronted her, I'd say like did you find out she was pregnant? 
When we went to the mobile um, ultrasound, I wanted to see how many weeks she was, and when she came out with the paper, I couldn't understand how, the number of how many weeks she was. Seeds of lies and deceit started to take root when Mr. Irvin relayed the incident of an adulterated ultrasound scan result. He, along with his sister Jada, believed it had been doctored to suit Ms. Funzie's narrative, a claim she vehemently denied escalating the drama in the courtroom. For um, ultrasound, I wanted to see how many weeks she was, and when she came out with the paper, I couldn't understand how, the number of how many weeks she was. Like, like they drew the no man cursive or something. They drew one week and two days, and you saw the lady hand me the paper off the bus. You would park right outside, and you saw her hand me the paper. I didn't know if she was pregnant by me or someone else. In a bid to further substantiate her claim, Ms. Funzie presented a picture of their boys, revealing they all had knock knees, arguing that this should count for something as it may be hereditary. She felt this visual evidence would bolster her case. Like they got the same? Yeah. Knock knees. Oh, they're, okay. All the other kids, they say they all got the same knees and the same body shape, and you say Joaquin got the same thing. Yes, Your Honor. And you believe these knock knees are hereditary and the body shape is yeah. an indication. That the court, however, had better plans and in search of the truth, invited a medical expert who established that it was difficult to say with certainty that that children at that age with knock knees had a biological relationship. This revelation struck a blow to Ms. Funzie's argument. Eve, this minor child carries that trait. I would say, in my expert opinion, it would be very difficult to determine this at this age. Okay. Knowing that the variants happen in children less than six years old. So, Ms. Funzie, as you listen to Dr. Richardson's testimony, does that change your belief? The shock was palpable. This finding counted for nothing as Ms. Funzie held on strongly to her belief that the children were indeed Mr. Irvin's. Y'all understand what he's talking about, but it's still, they all have knock knees. Have you ever told this other man that he is the biological father? No. No, you I haven't talked to him since the day that I cheated on Jordan with him. All right, so in this courtroom, we get to the truth. So this courtroom has tracked down this other man. Ms. Funzie's earlier statement soon faced a challenge when a message submitted to the court by the man with whom she cheated came to light. He, without mincing words, revealed to the court that they had been intimate multiple times. Of course, Ms. Funzie's jaw dropped, and the entire courtroom marveled at this unexpected twist. They tell him. We kept sleeping with each other three to four times after that with no con. This was between the months of October 2017 and November 2017. Miss Funzie, I'll let you respond now. That don't even make sense. They didn't say November 2017. I'm locked in my October. Okay, bro. Eventually, she surrendered and admitted that it indeed happened multiple times, shifting the dynamics of the case once more. Yes or no? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, it was more than one time or it was a one night stand? It was more than one time. <gasps> you go get okay. it. You lied. You lied to me. Listen, let her explain it. She's telling the truth now. She's getting to the place where she's ready to talk about this, and this is good, because this is what's going to... While the court prepared to get the results, Mr. Irvin proffered hope by stating that he was willing to accept the child as his, if indeed he was. This declaration brought a moment of calm to the room, showcasing a glimmer of potential reconciliation. However, if the child was not his, he wasted no time in expressing that it would mark the end of his relationship with Ms. Funzie. Yes, I'm hoping he's mine for my son's sake. And if he is not? If he's not, I'm gonna be done with this relationship for good. I'm ready to get the result. Jerome. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of... With this, the tension built up again in the room, setting the stage for what could be a decisive factor in this strained relationship. Would they stand united, or is this the end? Let's find out. Or Mr. Winfield is the father of one-month-old Joaquim Irvin. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Winfield. I know what I told you.